this is a guitar theory lesson about how to make seventh chords. Guitar chords don't have to be just a physical shape that we memorize and slap the right name on it. A lot of people know how to play a few seventh chords, maybe some hip jazz voicings, and when we play those, we can use them in our music and they sound great. But if we're just learning a chord name and then memorizing a certain shape that goes with that, and we're not understanding the structure of the chord, where it comes from and why, then we are definitely limiting our creative potential and our level of musicianship. So in the next three videos, we're gonna talk about how to make seventh chords and how to practice seventh chords in a way that gets us to that higher level of understanding. This is episode eight of a lesson series I'm doing all about how to understand and master chords on the guitar. This lesson should be helpful and informative on its own without having to watch the past episodes, but if you're confused about anything at all, definitely go back and watch those previous lessons. There's a link to a playlist of the full lesson series in the description. The ones that would be especially helpful to have watched in order to follow along for this video would be episodes two, three, and four. That's for scale theory, chord tone theory, and understanding chord numbers within the context of a key. I'm Jared from SoundGuitarLessons.com. Let's dive into this lesson on the music theory of seventh chords. So far, we've just been working with triads, chords that have a root, a third, and a fifth. And we've also learned what triads exist through a major scale and through a minor scale. So the triads that exist in a major key or a minor key. Most importantly, we know the structure of the major scale and how chords are born out of it. Triads are built from a type of chord structure called tertiary chords. Tertiary chords are chords that are built in intervals of thirds stacked on top of each other. Most of Western music is using this type of chord structure. With our scale theory knowledge, you can just think of it as taking every other note from whatever note you want of the scale. Whatever note you start on there is the root of the chord. You can do that off any note of the scale. Every other note is going to be intervals of thirds. So if you want the one chord of the key, you're gonna take every other note off of the one of the scale and you're gonna get one, skip two, you're taking three, you're skipping four, you're taking five, one, three, five. One to three is a third interval and three to five is a third interval. If you wanna build the two chord, you take every other note starting with the two, the second note of the scale. So you would take two, you'd skip three, you take four, so you take two and four, skip five, take six, two, four, six. Those are the three chord tones of the triad of the two chord of the scale. Two and four are a third apart and four and six are a third apart. It's a stack of two intervals that are both a third. Two to four is a third and four to six is a third. So when thinking of the parent scale that the chords come from, two, four, and six are the three chord tones of the triad off of the two, while at the same time, those three notes are the root, the third, and the fifth of the two chord. This is one of the most confusing things to get used to as we're learning theory, because you can zoom out and look at things from the level of the parent scale, where that scale is always one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the two chord is two, four, six, or you can zoom in and look at things from the level of the chord, and the chord tones then are labeled from the root of the chord. So in this case, the root of the two chord is two of the parent scale, but that same two is one of the two chord. So we have two layers going on at the same time. If we kept going with this tertiary structure and we add another interval of a third on top of this triad that we already had, we get a note that is seven notes away from the root. So we're gonna have one, three, and five originally. You add another interval of a third on top of that and you get seven, hence the name seven chord because that note you added is seven notes away from the root. The seven of the one chord is obviously seven, but the seven of the two chord is one because we had two, four, six. If you add another interval of a third on top of six, it gets to one. So the third above six is one. That's the seven of the two chord. A great way to figure out what the seven of any chord would be is just to think back a number. So the seven of the two is one. Well, one is right below two. So the seven of the five chord is gonna be four. The seven of the six chord is gonna be five. The seven of the three chord is gonna be two. So there are four types of seventh chords that naturally exist coming from a major scale. There's major seven, spelled one, three, five, seven, and that has a major third, and then stacked on top of that a minor third, and stacked on top of that another major third. That's the spelling and the structure of the major seven. And then there's dominant seven, 
This is also just what we call a seven chord. So like C7 is a dominant seven chord. This is spelled one, three, five, flat seven. And the structure of the thirds is that it's a major third with a minor third stacked on top of that, and then a minor third stacked on top of that. That's what makes the dominant seventh chord. The next chord type is minor seven, and that is spelled one, flat three, five, flat seven. And the third structure for that is a minor third with then a major third stacked on top of that, and then a minor third on top of that. And there's one more chord type that exists naturally in the major scale, and that's half diminished. This is also called minor seven flat five. Those are the exact same chord with uh, two different names for the same chord. So minor seven flat five is exactly what it is describing. It's a minor seven chord with a flat five. That's gonna be spelled one flat three flat five flat seven. And the third structure for that is minor third, and then another minor third stacked on top of that, and then a major third stacked on top of that, and that's minor seven flat five or half diminished. If we build out all the seventh chords off of each note of the scale, you're gonna get one of those four chord quality types. When we do that, in every major key, the chords end up being this. The one chord is a major seven chord. The two chord is a minor seven chord. The three chord is another minor seven chord. The four chord is major seven again. The five chord is dominant seven, and it's the only place in the key where dominant seven exists. The six chord is minor seven. And the seventh chord of the key is the half diminished or the minor seven flat five chord. And that's the only place where that exists in the key as well. I say that because it's a nice giveaway for what key you might be in. If you see a dominant seventh chord, you can treat it as or interpret it as the fifth chord of a major key. Even if it's in some other kind of context, unless it's altered or something like that, you can definitely find the scale that it comes from by thinking of it as the five chord of the major key. So a half diminished chord, you can think of it as the seventh chord of a major scale. Whereas the major seven chord exists in two different places and the minor seven chord exists in three different places. So if you see a major seven chord out of context, you don't know yet if it's the one chord or the four chord. So this is super important stuff to know and this is just a theory explanation in this video. In the following couple videos, we are going to be playing these chords all over the guitar, these exact seventh chord types with really specific exercises to do the practical practice of mastering them. But even after being able to play these chords all over the guitar and, and use them in music, this question often comes up, which is why are these the chords that exist in the major scale in this order? Why is the four chord specifically major seven? Why is that seventh chord, that one spot, that's half diminished? Well, it's because of how the thirds naturally stack up in the structure of the major scale. Remember that knowing those half steps in the major scale, where those half steps are, is our most fundamental piece of information that we can always refer back to when working on theory. So let's go ahead and think of those again, the half step between three, four, and seven, and one. Now, once we start stacking thirds to build these chords, all we have to think of is this. If that third interval, that third gap, has a half step within it somewhere, then it's a minor third. And if it does not have a half step between the two notes that make a third, then it's a major third. So on the screen is our spelling list of major seven, dominant seven, minor seven, half diminished, and the third structure of how the thirds stack up, whether it's different combinations of major third and minor third. So now we can put this to the test and, and build chords up from the scale and see, oh, what combination of, of stacked major and minor thirds make what chords off of each note of the scale? Let's go ahead and do it. So for the one chord, we're taking one, three, five, and seven. Between one and three, there is not a half step there. So that's a major third. Between three and five, there is a half step between those two notes. So that's a minor third. So we have, we have a major third and then a minor third stacked on that. Between five and seven, there is no half step and so that's a major third and then we get our stack major third minor third major third and as you see from our list that is indeed the structure of the major seven chord let's do it through all the other chords if we're building the two chord we have two to four okay there is a half step there so that's a minor third then we have four to six no half step between those two notes that's a major third and then six to one we do have a half step that's a minor third and we see oh yeah okay minor third major third minor third that's our minor seven chord that's why the two chord in a major scale from a major key is always a minor seven chord if we do this off the third note of the scale we get that same structure and that's why we have minor third major third minor third four for the three chord of the key. For the four chord of the key, we have four to six, major third, six to one, minor third, one to three, major third. That's why it is a major seven chord. So off the five chord, this alone is worth this whole explanation because it shows why is the five chord, when you add a seven, this dominant seven chord, why is it the only one that in the key that has that structure? Well, when we 
build it out this way, we really see, oh, because of the structure of the scale and where the how the thirds stack up, it's simply the only place where that structure can exist. We have five to seven is a major third, seven to two is a minor third, and two to four is another minor third. So it's the only place, off of five is the only place that you can have those two minor thirds stacked on top of a major third. And that's why that dominant seventh chord is only existing as the five chord of the key. Six chord, if we build it out, it's another minor seven chord, six to one, minor third, one to three, major third, three to five, minor third. And lastly, the seventh chord of the key, this half diminished chord or this minor seven flat five chord we see is unique as well because there's two half, uh, there's two minor thirds in a row. We have seven to two being a minor third, two to four being another minor third. That's a diminished triad right there. And it's the only spot that um, seven to two and then two to four is the only spot where you have those two minor thirds stacked on top of each other and then four to six is a major third and that's when we add the seven so we have minor third minor third major third that is that structure of the half diminished chord so that's what i wanted to cover today the chord quality types of the seventh chords through a major scale and specifically why they are that way Yes, this was just a lecture on the theory, and this is important stuff, but the real progress and the real insights and the real learning happens from the hands-on practice. So there's two things that I want you to do to start working on this. One, if you don't have it already, download my free chord chart called Chords with Color, because in that I have five different keys listed out, and each of those keys has the most common, most approachable open string version of the seventh chords through the key, the one chord, two chord, three chord, just like we talked about today. So you can start playing those, hearing them, and playing them with these um, open string chord voicings that are nice and kind of lush and ringing. Now that you know why they're grouped together in this way too, that should be helpful. And that chord chart has a ton of other chords too, because it's going through if you add nines to all the chords, and if you add elevens to all the chords, and if you add these other types of chord extensions that we're going to talk about in future lessons in this lesson series. The second way to get your hands on practice with this stuff is just make sure you don't miss the next few videos of this series, because I'm going to give you my two favorite exercises for unlocking how to comprehend and understand and master these chord types all over the fretboard. These are fantastic exercises for putting this theory stuff into real application on the guitar. So make sure you're subscribed and that you hit that notification bell. And if you want to get an email that I send out every time I put out a new lesson every Tuesday, you can sign up for that at my website at soundguitarlessons.com. That's it for now. If you have a guitarist friend who might benefit from this lesson or this series, please send it their way. I can't wait to see you in those next lessons. I'm Jared Borkowski. Thanks for watching and see you next time.